Okay, a quick reset for what happened on Friday. Let's start with this. Everybody, lots of people, wanted to get that deal done. It didn't get done, okay? Press conference after five, when everybody goes home, Alicia Priest with OEA says, we want capital gains on the table. We want to veto the hotel motel bill. Exclusively yesterday, a and B Chairman Wallace said on capital gains, no. And so the week approacheth, and it looks like loggerheads. So let's just start with looking into the crystal ball and a wonderful world, okay? What could happen to make everybody happy and end this walkout? Well, I don't disagree with uh, what some of the groups are asking for up at the Capitol, but what I do know is the one thing that could happen that would allow everyone to have a win and have us all uh, move forward would be if we would just restore the income tax rate back to 5.5%. This would cost the average Oklahoma family about $60 per family per year. It would bring in more than $300 million new recurring revenue dollars that we could use to invest in education, that we could use to make sure that class sizes were smaller, that we could add art and music back to elementary schools, that we would have the textbooks and the technology in our classroom that our kids deserve. It would be real dollars for real kids, and it's the right thing to do. Leader Eccles, what could happen to end the walkout and everybody walk away a winner? Well, first off, as a result of the walkout, everybody is a winner. So let's talk about what's already happened. Almost a 20% increase to the education budget, moving from 50th in teacher pay to 28th in the nation in teacher pay, not adjusted for cost of living, 11th in the nation for teacher pay, second in the region. That is what Oklahoma is right now, second in the region, only behind Texas. That happened because of the hard work and engagement of many politicians on both sides willing to compromise and for the teachers that said we were going to be involved, we're going to continue to do these things. In addition, an additional $40 million that wasn't through tax increases was passed in. A lot of that into the education budget. There's a lot of wins that have happened already. And he's already quoting hot chocolate. Everyone's <laughs> a winner, baby. That's how. All right. So let's talk about all the different sides. What is the most often asked question that you got this week, and what was your answer? The most often question I got asked is, how can I help? You know, I talked to over 3,000 teachers. I, I met with every educator. I stayed until every educator that was in the building who wanted to meet with me was able to meet with me. 3,000 teachers. I had wonderful experiences. Oklahomans are the greatest people in the world. And the most often question I got asked is, what can I do to help? And what we, what we continue to tell them is, keep up with your advocacy. Well, well, we have taken a great first step for Oklahoma education. There are those of us on both sides of the aisle that believe we're not where we need to be. And as they continue that engagement and they continue wanting to know who to help, things are going to keep moving in a positive direction. The most often asked question of you, and what was your answer? Well, I as well had thousands of people come by the Capitol this week. The building was full all week long. The question that I got asked the most, though, was who do we talk to? And the simple answer was you talk to other legislators in the building. But the more detailed answer, and I think the one that I want to share this morning is who do we talk to is you talk to your next door neighbors. You talk to your family members. You talk to your colleagues and coworkers. You talk to those people that you go to church with and people in your social clubs with. And you engage with them in this kind of civic way that uh, has been done this week at the Capitol. And you engage with them by saying that our state matters and that if you want us to have a better future than the present we have or the past that we've already lived through, then we're going to have to stay this engaged moving forward. And the more that you talk to them and the more you have those questions and answers, um, the more we'll have people participate in elections. And I think that'll make the real change. We had a lot of stories this week. Lots of stories. The, the uh, Facebook lives we've been doing from camps with the News 9 and News on 6, great stories for people. What story will you like to share that happened with your week in terms of the whole big picture about what's going on down there? Yeah, well, with everyone that came into my office this week, um, the story that I want to share the most were the high school kids that came in. Um, I had a young lady from Mustang High School, a junior uh, in Mustang, come in, and she shared a story that um, she thought it was normal that throughout her uh, career in high school that they would have to fundraise in order to take field trips. She thought it was normal that they would have to fundraise in order to pay dues to be in social clubs. She thought it was normal that they would spend um, you know, the beginning of a school year using duct tape to fix their textbooks. And what she sees from um, what took place this week was not only was it not normal, but that they could have something better. And it was, it's young people like her, young people that came from class in SAS uh, that are fighting not only for themselves, but for the kids that'll come after them. Really makes me think that uh, we have a bright future here. 
John, what story this week, and I know you've been in a jillion meetings and going 24-7, what story would you like to share with people about this week? Well, there must be something going on. <clears throat> there must be something going on in Mustang, because my story's asked actually from a young lady from Mustang, maybe even the same lady, I don't know, but we sat down and uh, she asked me, and I have some of Mustang schools, this made me very proud. She looked at me and she said, why, why should we still have hope? And I brought her into my office and I turned her around and, and the word hope that was created by uh, so the city rescue mission for me is, is on top of my door. And I said, the reason you have hope is because of what's happening now. If, if I didn't have that hope, I wouldn't continue to do what I do. And that's why I have hope that this is going to continue to be an education movement. While there are those that want to hijack this for a partisan movement, um, I think the citizens are seeing through that. And uh, we're going to do our best and continue to move forward with the progress we've made. All right, coverage has been, been pretty good, but I remember this commandment, the media giveth and the media taketh away. So, new week. We know where we ended Friday night. When is this going to end? Well, I, I don't know when this is going to end. That's not the role of the legislature. I, I do know that there have been calls now where it's not become about education funding, but it's become about taxes on small businesses and additional taxes on individuals in the state of Oklahoma. And, and I know where I want to stand is looking at corporate welfare and looking at getting more money in education by getting rid of payouts that we're paying to corporations that aren't even in the state of Oklahoma. I think what legislators need to continue to do is show this is about education. It's not about some bigger plan. It's not about some policy. It's not about some political party. And if we move forward with that and convince educators we have their back, it'll end in due course. When will it end? Yeah, it's really hard to say when it'll end, and I agree with uh, Leader Eccles that um, it's not up to us as a legislature necessarily to say when it'll end. It's up to uh, the advocates, the teachers, the parents that have been coming to the building every day, and their demands haven't been met yet. They're demanding that we put more resources into the classroom to make sure that our kids have an opportunity for a world-class education. And our kids deserve it. Our kids are worth it. And um, as a parent of kids in uh, Oklahoma City Public Schools, um, I demand that we do that as well. So when will it end? We don't know, but uh, we're all in the fight together. And we'll be on Facebook Live all this week. See this again at news9.com slash your vote count.